We're going to turn now to the latest on the showdown with Russia over Ukraine. The president says to meet with world leaders by phone today in a last ditch diplomatic effort to avoid a conflict. We want to turn to ABC News senior national correspondent Terry Moran on the ground there in western Ukraine. And look, a lot of accusations going back and forth about this side or that side doing what they said they would do. What is the absolute latest? Where are we right now, Terry? Well, the absolute latest right now, unfortunately, TJ, is an escalation in the fighting, that long simmering conflict in the eastern part of Ukraine between Russian-backed, Russian-armed separatists and the Ukrainian government has really lit up over the past couple of days. Today, in particular, the shelling across that, that front line there has reached levels that they haven't seen in months. And now an even more worrying side, uh, the Russian-backed separatists are evacuating villages uh, and the Russian uh, people who live around there are also vac evacuating, being advised to do so by the Russian government. Another worrying sign. On the diplomatic side, you know, we are seeing some effort by President Biden, as you mentioned, and by others to keep hope alive, as it were. But it just looks like it's at an impasse. That speech by Secretary of State Antony Blinken at the Security Council yesterday, please give us a pledge you aren't going to invade and we'll talk. Russia responding with, we have no plans to invade, but we have a demand that cannot be met, that Ukraine guarantee it will never join NATO, and that NATO roll back to 1997 positions. And so we are at an impasse as the fighting escalates. Ter Terry, what do you get a sense of? Because you use words in there like hope. Uh, every once in a while, there's a little glimmer of, of optimism, but at the same time, you use words like dire sometimes in how we're describing what's happening. Do you see mood shifts, and certainly among the people as well, for hope that this could all uh, be handled peacefully? You know, that's a great question. In the couple of weeks that I've been here, the mood has definitely shifted here. The tone from the Ukrainian government, which almost sounded like they were full of wishful thinking or even denial, oh, it's never going to happen, this is a charade, it's a game between the United States and Russia, has now gotten very serious. And following suit, uh, people here are beginning really to grip down and recognize that something awful the shadow of war is is lengthening across their land and they are concerned you know I, I talked with a woman who manages buildings for the cities we wanted to tour some of the bomb shelters and when i asked her did you ever think this shelter might be used in war it's soviet era she just dissolved in tears as she thought about her own children 15 year old girl 11 year old boy the drills that they're now doing at school to in case of bombardment or for first aid even there's a, a much greater seriousness here and focus on the worst case scenario which feels like it's getting closer uh, well it seems like there have been times where uh, even where we're getting it we've gotten uh, the past couple of weeks from the administration uh, they made it feel like, okay, the, uh, something could be coming in just a matter of days. An attack could be coming in, in days. And then at other times, it sounds like, okay, the, the diplomacy is going. So what is the sense now of something being imminent um, as opposed to we have some experts out there saying we could be in this heightened state of I intense negotiation, if you will, for, for the year. And this is just where we'll be. So how do we know when something is imminent or feels imminent, Terry? Yeah, you know, when, when you, the devices here go down, when the lights go off, we'll know that, that something, that the balloon has gone up, as it were. But the point you make, the United States has its own purposes in uh, issuing such dire warnings. And basically to try to back uh, Putin off, we know what you're up to, we can see it, and to try to rally the world for a peaceful resolution uh, against Russian aggression, which is essentially what we're looking at here. But for the people here, you can't keep them at that level of intensity mm -hmm. and imminent danger. You know, last week people got very serious, uh, then there was a few days where that supposed invasion date didn't come. Now there's another date being talked about and bandied about. It is hard for people to maintain that state of concern. It is important for the United States to try to issue those messages, to deploy intelligence in the information battlefield, but really for the readiness of the people here and the commitment of them here to preparation, I don't think it could be sustained over months. And, and that really is the problem. Right now, however, people do feel focused. They are readying themselves. And that's good news to the U.S. government, which was concerned that the people of Ukraine weren't taking it seriously enough. They are now. All right, Terry Moran, um, again, our ABC News senior national correspondent there for us. Uh, Terry, thank you, but also thank you. It's good to have you here on GMA3 with us, and we'll see you, all right? We'll see you, TJ. All right, in this programming note, folks, as the crisis unfolds, our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddis, will be on the ground for a special edition of This Week, Sunday morning, again, live from western Ukraine. Well, hey there.
there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.